welcome back to CCTV's News Bulletin, with today a political theme. The Hungarian House of Parliament, an interview on reach authorization, a statement on restriction, but first Mercedes with some issues from yesterday's sessions on the European regulatory strategy and implementation. Well, if there is something I have taken from the session on the European regulatory landscape is that there is really lots to do after 2018. Microplastics, changes in the dossier evaluation process, the outcome of the risk review, we still have lots to discuss and a lot of work to be done. Yeah, the topic of uh, evaluation and the reach attracted uh, quite uh, some attention during the session today. There were a lot of questions and my um, take uh, home message and also perhaps for registrants is that uh, we need to work together to see how we could best address the changes from next year uh, related to the dossier evaluation process. Uh, clearly, there is a lot to do for the registrants. They seem to have some concerns in, in relation to the changes, but I'm sure that working together with ECA, we could uh, address them properly. So, well, I think one of the most important issues uh, for me today was uh, looking also into the rich review implementation actions is the, the issue of the updates. Um, I think uh, it's important that uh, industry realizes that uh, updates of registration dossiers need to be more proactive, they don't need to be reactive, and that uh, when a company has placed a substance uh, on the market at a certain tonnage, it's at the time of the placing on the market and the registration dossier is submitted to ECA, that the responsibility for the testing comes in, not later on as a reaction of an ECA decision. As promised, we will now tread on a political path. Let's connect with Tibor, who is in front of the Hungarian House of Parliament, a place some of our delegates will visit during today's sightseeing tour. You made a good choice, not only because this extraordinary building are situated by the bank of the Danube River, but also the tallest building in downtown with St. Stephen's Basilica. Both of them are 96 meter high. Another reference to the number 96. You mean 1996, the founding year of Chemcom? No, the year 896, when Hungarians are conquered the land. Of course, 96 is a very important number. Also because this magnificent building, the parliament, has 96 steps all the way up on the main stairway. Please come with me and I will show you some beautiful parts of the inside in this neo-gothic building. The staircases and corridors are dazzling with statues, stained glass windows and nice frescoes. In the beginning there was an upper and a lower house. The upper house once housed the Hungarian magnates, like for example the English House of Lords. But in the current Hungarian democracy there is only a national assembly with 199 members. The sculptures in this lobby preserve the memory of old Hungarian national groups and crafts. The crown jewel of this room is the largest hand-knotted carpet in Europe. The real crown jewels are of course in the Dome Hall, the geometric center of the House of Parliament and the symbolic center of Hungary. This is where the Hungarian Holy Crown of St. Stephen's and the other coronation symbols like the sword and scepter are kept. The 96 stairs, covered with red carpeting, lead from the main entrance to the dome hall. Several fine-looking frescoes can be seen on the ceiling of this grand stairway. During the communist era, this large red star was added to the central tower above the dome of the building. To end with the heating and ventilation system in the building, they were quite a sensation in its day and one of the most modern such systems in Europe. The hot steam from the furnace room, located in the nearby facility, reaches the various rooms through a distribution chamber and radiators. The building was cooled with many tons of ice piled up in two huge shafts. Actually, a similar mechanism was deployed for the heating of the ballroom of our Grand Hotel Royal Budapest. Let's continue with some other hot stuff. Here are some highlights of the interview I had on REACH authorization. Thinking of the REACH authorization process might have people run shiver down their spine or have them bath in sweat. 
since in the authorization process you need to provide to RAC, the Risk Assessment Committee, and SEAC, the Socio-Economic Analysis Committee, the naked truth. Jeff, what strategies can a manufacturer or an importer adopt to avoid facing the market restrictions or authorization? Well, the flippant answer, of course, is simply don't use substances of very high concern. Um, but that's not always feasible or practical. Um, and it really is the ultimate challenge for businesses in their sustainability efforts. So the first strategy is to really know what you're making, what you're using in your operations, whether they're on the SVHC list or if they're on the registries of intents. Furthermore, you may want to look at your chemicals that you're using in your manufacturing processes to make sure that they're, they don't carry other properties or are potentially falling on the definitions under Article 57. Beyond that, you may want to, uh, manufacturers themselves may want to put internal restrictions on these substances so that you're not designing new products using these, pro uh, these substances. Uh, congratulations, eh? the use of your substance has been granted. Uh, but then what happens, Julius, if your circumstances change after the authorization has been granted? What circumstances change are you talking about, uh, Chair? Surely you've described everything in your dossier. Uh, no, you are touching upon a point which only now is becoming apparent uh, with uh, some of the authorizations that have longer review periods uh, running. Uh, Twelve years or, or even seven is a, is a long time in business. And things change. You might improve your process. Uh, there might be an external factor like Brexit uh, happening to you. Or very simple things. You want to move your production from an old site to a, a new site. Now, the REACH regulation in its defense has an article that covers kind of both eventualities, a review process and a change of circumstance one. The former is described, but is in fact meant to deal with the situation at the end of your authorization. The latter, unfortunately, is not described. There is no procedure for it. So right now, we're in a situation that uh, the moment you notify change of circumstance, you're opening Pandora's box. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, and there are already cases where inspections have taken place that have noted changes of circumstance that have led to installations being halted. There is no perspective on how to get them working again because there is no process to actually implement this. Uh, this is a huge lack in the, in the REACH regulation. There are uh, some ways around it, but uh, truly the best advice is don't change anything. Please watch the complete interview on our website and YouTube channel. Now it's time for the statement of the day. Authorization is the final resort. And since this is very costly and drastic, some companies prefer the more straightforward restriction of the use of a substance. Something I will discuss with Erika Koens, Product Stewardship Director at Clariant. Erika, welcome. Thank you, Chid. Happy to be here. Erika, can you explain the advantages of the risk management option analysis before deciding on restriction or authorization? Well, Chid. RMOA was initially understood to be the risk management option analysis. In the meantime, uh, it is being understood to be the regulatory management option analysis to better cover the wide scope of this exercise. This exercise is being done by member state authorities to uh, figure out in a case-by-case -case analysis the best option how to address a concern of a uh, chemical. That means by harmonized classification labeling, restriction or authorization or, or even other action or even no action at all. Uh, it is important for um, market players to support uh, the member state uh, authorities in this exercise by giving input because then it is uh, ensured that the overall conclusion is um, based on sound knowledge. And your statement is? All options should be considered before authorization. Please let us know what you think about this. Erica, thank you very much. At Chemcon, authorities and industry share ideas like this, but this might be a bridge too far. Talking about bridges, let's go to another colorful mural. This mural under the Rakochi Bridge has a city and water theme and depicts the linkage of Buda and Pest. Let's ask our local reporter more about the history of the development of Budapest. Hi Tibor, I see you're also on a bridge. Good day, I am on the Liberty Bridge. Can you tell us when Buda and Pest became Budapest? Certainly. Let's start with the famous year of 1896 when this bridge first opened. And above us, on the four masters, there are four beautiful turul birds. The turul birds are falcon-like birds, which are part of the Hungarian ancient 
mythology, the clan symbol of the ruling houses of Arbad, who had their residence here in Budapest. In 1361, Buda became the capital of Hungary. It was not until 1849 that the first permanent bridge, the chain bridge across the Danube, linking Buddha and Pest was opened. In 1873, Buddha, together with Old Buddha, or Old Buddha and Pest, were merged to create the new metropolis, Budapest. The chain bridge is one of the icons of Budapest. No turus here, but four stone lions. It is a widespread urban legend in Budapest that the lions do not have tongues and the sculpture was ridiculed for that. His ironic response was, would that your wife have uh, such a tongues like my lions? That's a good story, Tibor. Will you join us at tonight's social event? Certainly I would like to, but I don't know where that will be. We try to keep that a secret. May I give you a call later if I get stuck and I cannot find it? Sure, but I don't think that is needed. Or as the British say, we cross the bridge when we get there. Time for the forecast of the day. Our main focus is authorization and restriction. And a very exciting afternoon on North America with Tosca developments in the United States and the Canadian Chemicals Management Plan. Thank you for watching and for those in Budapest, enjoy the sightseeing and looking forward to seeing you at tonight's social event.